Hello and a warm welcome to the Art of Medicine Online Academy. I am Dr. Ireneo, a doctor by default for a cardiovascular thoracic surgeon and beyond by design. Today, I want to tell you my story, a journey of ups, downs and plateaus, but a journey which is definitely going to resonate with important moments of your life. Honestly, I've never felt the need to tell this story in its entirety before. But somehow I feel today is the right time and the right place to tell this story to you. I was born in a middle class family where being a doctor has been a sort of a family tradition spread over three generations. But there was a problem. I did not want to follow that tradition. I wanted to be an engineer or an architect. However, my tryst with destiny and my peculiar love-hate relationship with my class 6 mathematics teacher at school resulted in me developing a peculiar love-hate relationship with mathematics. The result was that my class 10 board exam result had me literally escaping the bottom to get through mathematics and a 69.8 overall percentage result. One look at the marks card and my father made an instant decision that my love for mathematics was not taking me either to an engineering or an architecture college. We ended up dropping mathematics and I ended up in a jiffy being transformed from an engineering or an architecture seat aspirant to an MBBS seat aspirant. Pushed into a corner, I bounced back fast and hard. I took both the class 11 and class 12 exams, standing 10th in the state of Goa. In fact, I was on the top of the selected list of MBBS students at the Goa Medical College that year. On my first day at medical school, traveling in the Goa Medical College bus from its erstwhile Goa Medical College campus in Panjim to the new Bambulim complex, I felt on top of the world. I felt as if life was beginning to settle. The truth was that it was still very early days and life was grossly unsettled still. Along the four and a half years of MBBS and the year of internship, I started being fascinated by surgery, in particular, cardiothoracic surgery. I had read stories about the field, and since this speciality did not exist in Goa, at that time, I was all the more interested in pursuing it. In fact, one fine evening, I performed a peculiar exercise. I cut a strip of paper from my notebook, took a big fat red marker from my drawer, and wrote on that strip of paper, in bold letters, I want to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. Feeling good about my accomplishment, I then proceeded to stick that strip of paper on the inside of my writing desk drawer. Unfortunately, my plan suffered a setback when I missed securing the MS General Surgery seat in the Goa Medical College. I ended up taking a short post in ENT while I continued my plan for post-graduation in general surgery as the first stop towards my MCH CVTS dream. I ordered Schwartz and Schwartz textbook of surgery while in ENT and started reading it in right earnest. My father was upset that I had chosen not to take the other two available post graduation seats in orthopedics and anesthesiology. While I had missed the MS general surgery seat in Goa, financial reasons put pay to my MS general surgery plans in private medical colleges in the pre neat era, nor did they allow me to take up the MS general surgery seat at the University of Adelaide in South Australia for which I had applied, and also these same reasons did not allow me to pursue my USMLE plans aggressively. 
Everything happens for the reason they say and everything happens for the better. So when nothing appeared to be going right, I chose to go left. And amidst some taunts from my friends, I chose to be the first and the only goan sitting in a class of 120 students appearing for the primary DNB exam of the National Board of Examinations. 119 students had traveled to Goa to answer the exam being conducted at the Goa Medical College from the neighboring states of Karnataka, Maharashtra, even as far south as from North Kerala. That evening, I celebrated with five of my friends. A result which came two months later, I had passed my DNB primary at the first attempt. In those days, there was no DNB common entrance and I ended up having 20 of my first set of applications for a DNB general surgery seat over a two-month period, taking me nowhere. They probably ended in some dustbin somewhere. But my 21st application had me traveling to Ernakulam for an interview and my subsequent selection for the DNB general surgery program at the Medical Trust Hospital in Cochin. I returned a month later to Cochin to join the program and was confronted with some news again. No one from the hospital had appeared for the DNB general surgery final exam from that institution since it had got the recognition eight years prior. My colleagues and well-wishers at the hospital tried to convince me to take a general surgery speciality seat either in B DNB or MS at a different institute. But I chose to stay on and be the first one to appear for the DNB general surgery final exam from the hospital. It turned out to be the best decision I could have made in those circumstances. The hands-on experience at Medical Trust Hospital was mind-blowing and Dr. T.M. Joseph, my guru, the first surgeon to perform an open heart in Kerala, was the right guide I needed to help me in those times to develop a mentality of an uh, eagle. This eagle here accompanied me back home 25 years ago after my first stint of nine months at a stretch in Cochin. I became the first candidate from Medical Trust Hospital to pass the DNB general surgery exam. I then joined the Manipal Academy of Higher Education as a faculty in CVTS. Interestingly, without a degree in CVTS, but based on a strong DNB thesis on cardiothoracic trauma management, which I had conducted at Medical Trust Hospital in Cochin. Nine months later, I took three MCH entrance exams in a span of a month and a half. Mumbai, Manipal, and Jipmer in that order. I got selected for the MCH CBDA seat in all the three places, topping in Manipal and Jipmer, and then chose Jipmer Pondicherry as it was always my number one option. Jipmer was an experience. Two years down the line, I had my MCH degree in hand, got married a week later, and was scheduled to join as a junior consult consultant in CBTS 10 days later in Chennai. I returned to Chennai after my marriage along with my wife who was doing her post-graduation there. But I was caught unaware by a surprise waiting for me. My prospective employer had gone back on his word and hired someone else to fill the position. And so there I was a fully trained and qualified cardiothoracic surgeon, newly married and gloriously unemployed. The next three months were spent by the theoretically jobless me to ask myself the three important questions which have subsequently formed 
the backbone of all my decision making and my mentoring program. The three questions are, where are you going? Why are you going there? And the third, how are you planning to get there? Three questions asked with respect to three areas of life, personal, professional, and financial. Trust me, ask yourself these three simple questions and rest assured, they will transform your mind and your life too. Medical schools had taught me enough and more of science, but those three months laid down the strong foundations of my knowledge and understanding of the art and economics of personal, professional and financial life. I've had the opportunity subsequently to build immensely on these foundations over the last 20 years to add value to my life. I'm sure they will add value to your life as well. So after those three months of theoretical joblessness, I returned to the Manipal Academy of Higher Education and the Manipal Healthcare Enterprise Private Limited as a faculty and a junior consultant in CBTS. The KMC Heart Center in Mangalore was born and started doing well. Nearly two years later, we started having roadblocks to our progress by certain practices of competitor hospital my soul started asking me difficult ethical questions and I found myself confronted by three choices. Number one, let the status quo prevail. Number two, return to Goa to give back to my people and society. Or number three, run away literally and take up an upcoming opportunity in CVTS in New Zealand. To solve me, and get me these questions out of my mind, I dialed my guru, Dr. T.M. Joseph. And his one-liner in typical Mahatma Gandhi pattern style put my mind to rest. Can you guess that line? Dr. T.M. said, Irineo, be the change you want to see. And that did the trick. I returned to Goa, much against the wishes of many, including my aging parents, to the only cardiac center in Goa at that time. It was not long before my net nest of ethics was again stirred by differences over pricing and promotion of procedures, especially in the subspecialities of endoscopic thoracic surgery and vascular surgery. Six months later, I chose to turn into a visiting consultant and a freelancer and an entrepreneur in healthcare. And so began a journey of promoting myself and my expertise, of designing and executing cost-effective treatment packages, drafting and signing MOUs and MOEs amongst a host of allied activities. Activities which are not taught in medical school but are very critical to establishing a successful career in medical practice. It, I ended up ha having to work 18-hour workdays, driving around 120 to 150 kilometers on a daily basis in Goa. Sometimes from a prospective reference doctor's clinic to another, from one hospital to another and then from one CME meeting to another. One fine day, my body decided it had enough. One fine Saturday evening, while having dinner with my wife and my visiting sister-in-law at a Kolwa beach in South Goa, I had an episode of cafe coronary on a piece of chicken stick and nearly choked to death. I had developed a giant pharyngeal pouch, secondary to severe esophageal cricopharyngeal spasm. I had been guilty of neglecting the difficulty in my swallowing, which had been progressing for a while. I underwent a couple of endoscopic procedures and a surgery for the same, and returned back to the operation theater 
15 days later, a smarter version of me was born, personally, professionally, and financially. And then it all started falling in place gloriously. 15 years later, all the personal, professional, and financial goals set during my three months of joblessness in Chennai had been achieved and surpassed. I set myself new goals at a personal, professional, and financial level. I enrolled and successfully completed an MBA in healthcare management and entered formally the healthcare management consulting and mentoring space. COVID-19 put some breaks on my journey, but I took the opportunity to put my learnings on paper and released both a hardcover and a Kindle edition on Amazon.in and Amazon.com. The book titled The Art of Medicine, An Essential Guide to Positive Experience in Healthcare, which is here, has done well for itself and for me. And now the lockdowns induced by the second wave of COVID has resulted in me launching the Art of Medicine Online Academy. I must thank both our colleagues who suggested the idea of the Academy and the two new modules of the Ground Zero and the Masterclass to be added to the coaching and mentoring programs. To widen the reach of these programs to the 2% of doctors amongst you who are in pursuit of an extraordinary life of personal, professional and financial excellence. I will leave you with two of my favorite quotes. The first one from Charles Swindoll who said, Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Let it sink in. And here's the second quote from Stephen Gandalf. It's of my favorite. Healing is an art. Medicine is a profession. And healthcare is business. Thank you for your time. Trust me, today is definitely the first day of the rest of your life. Come, let's be a part of the journey. All the very best.